In this tutorial, I'll show you how to calculate the rotational inertia. The question reads, calculate the rotational inertia for one 2 kilogram mass at the end of a 3.0 meter rod of negligible mass and the rotational inertia of a dumbbell consisting of 2 kilogram masses on the end of a 6 meter long rod of negligible mass pivoted about the center of the rod. Let's begin with an illustration. So for that first scenario, we have a 2 kilogram mass, which I'll represent as this cube. And it's connected to a rod that is 3 meters in length. So let's say that is our rod, and it is 3 meters long. Now this is being rotated from this point where this is moving in that pathway, much the same way that you see in the animation on your screen. And whenever you have this type of rotation, you will use this formula for rotational inertia being I is equal to m r squared, where m represents the mass, and for us it's 2.0 kilograms. The radius is given in the question as 3.0. We have two significant figures in both, and that's being raised to the power of 2. So 2 times 3 to the power of 2 being 9, is equal to 18 kilograms, and that's in meters. So we have 18 kilograms times meters squared. Let's continue with the second part, the dumbbell. So let's assume that the dumbbell is like the ones that you would find at a gym, where you have a two kilogram mass here, and the rod is six meters in between the two weights, and another weight right here. So let's just make it 3D. Okay, so that gives you some depth. Now, they want us to calculate the inertia for the masses being pivoted at the center of the rod. So if they're pivoted at the center of the rod, that means that the radius is 3 meters. Now just to give you an idea of how this would be rotated, it would look something like this. Okay, so we're not rotating it over here, we're rotating it at the center. So let's use the same formula. It is the same sort of rotation as we saw in the first part. So we have I is equal to a mass, and the mass is 2 plus 2, which is 4 kilograms. The radius is 3, raised to the power of 2, and don't forget the units. So we end up with 4 times 9 being 36 kilograms times meters squared. Now just before I conclude, if we were to rotate this about one mass as opposed to two masses, our rotational inertia would be a little different. In other words, if the rotation started from over here, this mass would not be part of the equation. Instead, it would be I is equal to the two kilogram mass here, but the radius would change to six to the power of two. And so if you multiply this all out, you would end up with 72 kilograms times meters squared. And there you have it. That is how to calculate the rotational inertia.